Okay, I think we should start. Uh, good morning to people and good evening to other people from around the world. Thank you for logging into the webinar. So my name is um, Brian Chaff. I'm head of BMW at Opus IBS. And um, the purpose of this webinar is, is to provide you with the technical overview of our latest product functionality and guidance on what, it, what is unique about the Drive Pro tool. If you have any questions, please um, address them to me. And then what I do, I'll answer them at the end of this webinar. Thank you very much. So what, what sets us apart at Opus IBS for the customer giving you the, the edge in the diagnostic world? Well, first of all, it's the product, the Drive Pro product allows lots of functionality tech support that we have and obviously software support and we have obviously another product which is called wrap which i will go over as we go through this webinar what sets us apart our well, direct link to software support that's essential in this modern day and age that we can send in a request from the tool whether it's software whether it's um, something to do with a request from a technical point of view. And obviously now we can obviously use the remote tooling access. We can carry out software updates directly to the tool. And again, we have remote wrap coding and programming. So the capabilities to send in logs is essential um, for us as a company to give you guidance on how to fix the, the vehicle. Software, where we can actually then control what we're doing with the software, we can send it directly to the tool. Um, and obviously you can then carry out more direct use to the customer, exactly how they can run the diagnostic program. So, if, let's let's take an example where um, we have a programming error. Now this could be for lots of reasons. It could be that the, there is an incorrect part fitted to the vehicle. There could be poor communication to that control module. Uh, and there could be obviously be uh, when you're trying to program it, it doesn't like programming that particular module and it comes up with an error. And the error will come on the later vehicles in a final report like this. And in that final report, you will see a red section of text telling us that the job has not been carried out correctly, hasn't been finalized, hasn't been finished. So what is our next job? When we see this, what do we need to do? Well, what we need to do is we need to send in a support request. How do we do that support request? Well, on the Drive Pro, we're going to support, as you can see they're marked in red. We're going to support, and then because when we're coding and programming with Autologic product, what happens is, is that it automatically stores that data. The programming data, the coding data is automatically stored onto the tool. So when it comes up with a final report of a problem, that problem is within the software or on the vehicle is now loaded into the tool so in this example here you see is a mini r50 cooper where we have the chassis number so that's the that's the one that we are interested in that's the one we want to send in so when we send it in we go to a vehicle and then when we're in vehicle we can then have the chassis number in there the, um, the model type you can put the mileage in if required and then we need the info. This is the important part. What is the symptom? What actually happened? Where did it go wrong? And then what work was carried out? What have you done to try to repair it? You know, did you disconnect the tool from the vehicle, turn the ignition off, take off the support unit, and then you carried out a battery reset, and then you went back in and tried to program again, and then you had a similar failure. 
then you can write that in the work that's carried out. And then you can then carry on to the next screen, which says contact. And then obviously we put the email address in, which is already set in there anyway. And then you can send this in. You can even attach a file if required. If you had a screenshot of it that you wanted to send in, which would help the support teams, then that'd be great. You could put that in there and send it in. And then obviously the summary. This is very important. In the summary, what we need to do in the summary is we need to know exactly what's in that. As you can see on where it's circled there with two, it actually tells us exactly what's in this report. This log file tells us exactly what we put in there. And then if we're happy with that, then obviously we press send and then we send it in. Then that will come into our database, into our CRM, and then someone can look at it. So there's other ways that you can do this. I don't really want to complicate this too much, but what you can do, you could go into file manager, you could go into sessions, again, that session will appear, and then you could carry on, and then you could send it into us. And that's how we would like that to be done, if it's possible. Then the remote access, how does it work? Well, the beauty of the Drive Pro is, is that a technician, whether it's a software technician engineer or whether it's a actual technician wants to um, be able to command the tool, they then can remotely access into the tool. They then can see, uh, they can control things like um, what you see on the screen. Um, what exactly do you want to do from here on? Do you, have you seen an error in the software? Have you got a fault code that you want to understand a bit better? Um, and then what they can do then, they can access the tool directly and take control of the tool. And they can run through the procedure you had, and then they can see exactly what's going wrong, which gains better communication between the customer and the technician. Remote, so what is this? remote access programming and remote services. Well, it enables the, the Drive Pro platform to flash program, issue coding, and also you can carry out complex diagnostic routines on demand. So what we try to do is today we're able to support remote access programming across lots of brands, but obviously this is ever increasing month to month, there will be more and more manufacturers covered. And the coverage, as you say, is growing at a steady rate. And we, we encourage the Drive Pro customers to inquire with us based on their workshop requirements. So if, if they wanted to program a, uh, let's, let's look at a Volvo. They wanted to program a Volvo. They wanted to program a BMW. Then what they could do is they would then contact the wrap team and then they would go through exactly how to carry out that function and that's another bonus another unique feature of this tool where you have all these different segments to the tool to be able to carry out all the, all the different complex work so it, this is a it this enables as you see here to flash programs there's a technician there looking at the screens here have more than one screen um, and then what it would do is it then it go through obviously diagnostic routines if required. And obviously this is carried out by, by uh, up to date data that we have. Um, the, uh, the coverage, as I keep saying, is, is ever growing. And what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to remote into um, carrying out all these functions with on the OEM, OEM applications necessary to carry out these routines. So how is the personal file section work for the customer? Well, in the, in the Drive Pro tool, there is a, an update section where you can update the software. Now this has, has a great use. And when you go into updater, you'll see there is right at the bottom, you'll see there's personal downloads. What this helps us to do is 
is that if there was a on-demand look at the vehicle, you're talking to a software engineer or you're talking to a technician, and um, they're looking into the tool and they can see it, they then can remotely directly go into this tool, fix that issue, providing obviously um, everything's available to them. And then what they can do then is they can um, send you a fix file for that particular ECU before that particular variant that you can then have that sound as a personal download. And what we try to do is, is because there is lots of variants out there um, on these ECUs, even though you know it, it seems to us that there's only one, that's the one we're working on, you know, it's a DDE7. Um, but the, for DDE7, there is like 50 different variants. So therefore, sometimes the data will be incorrect or could be incorrect because we're, you know, we make mistakes. We're not infallible. So what, what can we do? So we can then directly drive that file into the tool directly for the customer there and then. And, and then he can go off and test it. Then we're happy it's covered under that variant. Then we would then add that to an update. Once we know it's worked, it's worked seamlessly, then we would add that to an update. So personal downloads are set there for you to have directly to your tool and your tool number. So how do we send a quick test report? I've been asked to go over this because um, we appear to be having a few issues by sending in quick test reports. And this is just an example here on an E90. We're going to quick test, we hit the quick test button. And when it's finished running the quick test, it then shows us the fault codes that are so associated to each module. And then we can view that report. And then we can see exactly what's in there. And then that also can be sent directly via an email or it can be sent through the um, up through the um, support protocol. Well, obviously, we prefer it through the protocols. We need to know what you've done on the quick test. But if this is just a quick fire thing that needs to be done, then we can easily see that as well. Now, the biggest issue we appear to be having with a quick test report sent in is that there's nothing in it. The customer sends it in. A technician calls back, whether it's a software technician, whether it's a technician himself, he calls you up and says that you've sent that reporting, thank you very much, but there's nothing in it. And a lot of the times are because the ignition is not on. Um, a lot of the times are there's nothing in that quick test report. And then the customer will call us up and say to us, well, you know, I can't get communication to control modules. And this is getting increasingly more difficult. And the reason why that is, is because in the old days, we put the key in and we turned the ignition on and we went away and did whatever work we wanted to carry on the vehicle. But today, to keep the ignition on, on an F-series car, you may need to have the seatbelt connected. I would advise that. Uh, open the door, run your diagnostic cable under the door and put the latch over on the door lock to try and keep the ignition on. On a G-series vehicle, then we obviously we have to have it in pad mode. And I'll go over pad mode a bit later in this webinar. So you see, we've got to make sure we have the ignition on when we're carrying out the quick test. It's essential. So <clears throat> support, again, you send it under support logs if you want to, so we could see it. It's just going back into the same framework as what we went through before, and we just carry on till we send it in. So as you can see, vehicle, make sure it's the correct vehicle in there. Info, what is it we want to put in there? What, how can we help the, the software engineer? How can we help the, the technician? How to fix this vehicle? More information is the better. Information is the key. And then obviously contact, and then if you wanted to, it was a screen capture or a quick test file, you could then attach it 
if you wanted to and send it in again we check exactly what we've done and then we send it in um i'm not sure everyone's aware that um we have a mobile app the mobile app looks like this so in the mobile app you can see that obviously you have to download the the app and obviously it's ios and android capable and you can then download this and then you can enter your username password you can log in you can type in the registration number of the vehicle it will then produce you the chassis number the model type and then you can go on and then you can send uh, uh, photographs from what you've done you can take a picture of the chassis number if you wanted to if it's relevant to what you're doing and then you can enter all the all the different um, fault codes you have in it after running and then you you could send that in and that will come straight into our crm and be logged on there so now you haven't had to call in but it'll go directly onto our crm and then a technician will call you back so it's a, it's a nice little feature to have because you're busy people and busy people need quick effective things to make the workshop more efficient and this is the best way to do it so i just wanted to make you aware there's an app out there which allows you direct links into our crm just fill in the data as it goes through screen by screen and then we can help you and someone will call you back without you even having to call in you can carry on working so the wonderful pad mode that's come with g-series vehicles is a difficult um, thing to select at times because you have to be very quick so on the data here on the screen you can see a nice um, start stop button and to get pad mode on we need to press that button three times very quickly in 0.8 of a second that will then turn on our pad mode and keep our ignition on so we can carry out programming diagnostics but it's essential we have this and get it working because if you press the button twice or once it will bring the lights on the into the instrument cluster but we don't have the ignition on and it will time off so if you started doing any work if you started doing programming or anything like that, it would time off and obviously it will fail programming so we must make sure pad mode's on so we just hit the button three times within 0.8 of a second and then we view the instrument cluster and we check to make sure that you can see the engine symbol lit up one very unique thing about autologic opus ivs products has been for bmw is allowing you to edit the vehicle order now this is a unique function and as you can see the the unique function about it is it allows us to go in and adjust the vehicle order so you can see there i'm in the first page it says display vehicle order so let's display the vehicle order these two buttons you never touch unless you call in and speak to a technician and he will then offer you support on what to do next any part of adjusting the vehicle order i need you to contact technical i need you to so we can explain to you exactly what you can do because you could destroy the ecu that you're trying to to work with or what you could do is change the vehicle of the car and you could take out safety features and obviously then we'd be in all sorts of problems. So if you want to carry out display vehicle, and what's the benefit of this? Well, the benefit of this is we can add, um, let's take, we could, we could add, um, it's not a good one, by the way, we could add 609, which is going to be um, professional, um, navigation CIC CCC mm. we'll add this to the vehicle order and then we could go in and we could then code it to the vehicle but to code it to the vehicle we need to know what ECUs to code it to 
So it makes it more flexible. If you added a part to the car, you, you, know, you change the headlights of the vehicle and you wanted to then go in there. Because it's not a standard retrofit from BMW. In other words, the BMW, um, you didn't have the BMW kit, but you bought them from Heller or you bought them from a, a, a known manufacturer and you put them in. And then we could then try and then change that vehicle order so it accepts that data manually. Obviously, we prefer you to use genuine retrofits from BMW because that way we can just go in and we can choose the retrofits and it will automatically do all this for you. But if we had a problem where um, it wasn't working or that particular function wasn't on a standard retrofit, then what we could do then is, is then we could add this in manually and guide you through it. But please call technical first. So what I'm trying to say now is, is this. It's great, this feature. It's been with us for quite a while, but we must address it the correct way. And the correct way is to call a technician and let them help you guide you through using this. It's very flexible. It's very good when it's used in the correct way. This is now taking you to the subject where um, short circuit reset, another unique feature of the tool. Um, what, what can happen is, is that um, a, a light, headlight, side light, parking light could short uh, in the wiring, could short at the bulb, could short. And once it does that, after a certain amount of ignition cycles, that will then store that because it's trying to put that on, it tests it, it tries to put that light on, it can't put it on because it's shorting. Then it has that overload is then registered into the FRM, FEM or BDC. And then what happens then is, is that it then flags it as a permanent fault and you can't get rid of it. And that light will not come back on again, even though you may have fixed it. So in, in the early days, you had to change the FRM, put a new one in. There wasn't a short circuit reset. Um, but here at the Autology Opus IVS, we made this software available on E-Series vehicles very early on that you could carry out a short circuit reset. How do we do that? Well, <clears throat> we, have, we have a fault code in there saying short circuit reset in the FRM. So we're going to choose an E90 as an example here. And then we're going to go through the E90, we're going to go to body, and then we're going to go to footwell module. And then when you're in the footwell module, there is FRM short circuit reset. Now this will only reset and be stored if we fix the fault. If we haven't fixed the fault, yeah, we could clear this. But within, as the cycles of the ignition go on and off, it will then be re-registered again. So a nice feature, haven't got to change the module. Modules aren't cheap these days, and therefore we can um, carry out the short circuit reset. F-series vehicles. So on F-series vehicles, it's in the FEM. So we select the model. We could obviously do auto determination, go to body, go to the front electrics module, and there we can see short circuit reset. Remember, we must fix the problem. We can't just press short circuit reset and hope it fixes it. Uh, I wanted to show you um, on X5, F15, where we go to the BDC on this model to do a short circuit reset. How do we do that? Well, obviously we select the model. F15, we go to body. We go to body domain controller, BDC. Then we have to go into service functions. Once we're in service functions, then we can carry out the BDC short circuit reset. So this BDC short circuit is across the range. So just to Go on one more, there's a G-series, BDC. What do we have? So we have a G30, we need to go to body. We need to go body domain controller. 
we then go to service functions and then we have the short circuit reset so all these things are unique because what's happening about the uniqueness of this is we don't have to change the module providing we fix the fault we don't have to change it and obviously that's saving a lot of money and um but, but the part about this is obviously we have to fix the fault for us to be able to reset the counter <clears throat> what is unique to the again to the opus ivs product is that we can now carry out condition-based services and we can write the service history to write the service history <clears throat> We need to obviously go into select the model we're going into select cbs and then in there will be right service history when we're in the right service history we have a two um, parts to this on the on page one and that is add a service required uh, record this is obviously recommended it says there in brackets and there's erase all service resets obviously we don't press button two. If we press button two, we erase everything that's stored into the um, iDrive. So unless we've taken a picture of every single service function on our mobile phone, we're not gonna be able to put it back in again. And the only way we could put it back in would be if we had BMW Vista, we could go online with pass through and then what we could do is we could write the service data back into the iDrive. So it, what we're trying to do here is we want to add a service function that we've carried out in the way of microfilter, engine oil, inspection service. So <clears throat> the first page that comes up will ask us, do you want to add this in kilometers or do you want to add in miles? So obviously here in the UK, we're doing miles. And then we have date of service, mileage of the service, so we need to know the mileage. Dealer ID, um, obviously we're not a dealer, or we could be. We could add our dealer number in there or what we can do, we can add seven characters. So depending on how your, um, your company name is, you could take different letters from there and add that in so you know it's your company that's adding this into the iDrive. And then obviously, once you've done that, we can then do dealer type. And dealer type will obviously be, uh, it, it has a selection there for manufacturer and non-manufacturer. And then what you have there is you have um, a description, a service required, select the description, and you have a little drop down menu, you can choose from that. Then there's the um, service condition. So you have a little drop down menu again where you can add that. And then that's if you wanted to add one. So it's come in, it's had an all service, you want to add that to all service. If you wanted to add more, then obviously then you could you would then go to um, enter another service item if you if you only want to carry out the one service item once you've added the mileage in then you then select um the bottom line bottom arrow and then you would carry on let's do that now and then you have the option to view the report so what services you've carried out or you've selected will now be displayed in a report before you write it. So you can just double check that you've carried out everything you want to do, put every piece of information in there that you want to do. Then you view that report, you say, yes, I like that. You come out the report and you press write and that will write it to the iDrive. At the present moment, this will write it to the bottom of the menu not to the top of the menu. I know a lot of customers have asked us, can we do this? It is something we're looking into, so we can add it to the top of the menu and not the bottom of the menu. But the most important thing, it's in there. You can see it. 
So we write it, it's done. So now we've carried out, <clears throat> we've wrote the service history, there is a few little quirks that can happen. And the quirks that can happen could be, it does not write it to the iDrive. It could be, um, or when you go to write it to the iDrive, suddenly all the information has disappeared. If that's happened, then I need you to turn the ignition off, take the battery charge off the vehicle or support, support unit. I need you to go and do a battery reset. And when you do a battery reset, normally it will populate that back into the iDrive automatically for you. Um, if you wanted to be double careful when doing this, you could use your mobile phone, go into the uh, vehicle um, service, right service function in the iDrive. And then what you could do then is you could take a picture of screen one where it tells you what's done, then go to then highlight it and go onto screen two. So it tells you exactly what's been carried out under that mileage and take a picture of that. And then if there was a problem, you could type it back in manually. Hopefully, as you can see there, it's showing you the service history. You can see exactly what's on the screen. You can go and view it. And you can obviously then see exactly what's been carried out. And these are just a few screenshots just to show you what the data looks like on the iDrive, on the CID, I should say. So you get a better example of what's being carried out and what's being done. Um, a lot of people are aware, and a lot of people aren't aware, but recently um, we released a, in the US, we released the Drive Pro ES. The Drive Pro ES, which is essentially a new multi-brown diagnostic offering. That was launched in the US and that gave them full vehicle coverage of them being able to diagnose multi-brands. For, so for here in Europe, we're offering a expand, expanding out multi-brown coverage with the new Drive Pro Elite package. The Drive Pro Elite package kit contains of two diagnostic devices. Our latest Drive Pro hardware, the same hardware as the ES in the US, and a Microsoft Surface Go installed with our partner software Autocom and Pico 7. Both devices are fully connected to our IVS 360 support center. So you can see that, that you get the same technical support across all brands. And just to show you a bit more about what it's all about, is there's two diagnostic tablets and a multi-brand diagnostic coverage. And all these pits that you see on the screen are part of the kit. And it now gives you full functionality across multi-brands and also gives you full technical support across the multi-brands. Well, if you want to know any information regarding um, the Drive Pro Elite Diagnostic Kit, if you go to sales for slash UK at opusivs.com, one of our support team will be able to help you. Um, I'm down, uh, this is now, um, as you see, the part of the um, where we've completed the webinar today. And now I'm going to look at some questions that have been sent in and try and answer some of these questions. Um, please, can I have the drive tool to work when not in the range of a wireless network? OK. Um, all, all you need to do, all you need to do with that is um, where the USB is on the um, where you have the USB tool. 
where you can plug in the top of the tool. So you have a USB to Ethernet adapter. Then you could plug your Ethernet adapter into the top of the tool. Someone's asking about a USB printer. Um, not something we, something we could look into. I need to take some notes down. Um, I did this swap on the X6, E71, 2009. Did what swap? Okay, let me start from the top. Um, Whitley Gary asks, can you bring back the place in the queue count down that was really good? Can you bring back the place in the queue count? Okay, I think that's where he's gone technical support. Something we can look into. I also have another one here, um, Drive Pro Volvo Suite. <laughs> we wrap dealer access to code, steering lock units, access security pin. Um, this one here from A1 Auto Tech regarding um, different brands. You used to wrap. The best way for me to answer that is you contact a wrap team and they will be able to discuss that with you. On the mobile app, would it be good if we could add this? through the job currently we can only append when auto logics open and then close the support section can this be added again what i'll do is i will take all this down um, from here and then we can look into it and when we run our next webinar i can then answer a, a lot of these questions for you um, That appears to be the most of the things people have asked for at the present moment. As I say, I will take these down and I will look into it for you. Thank you again for watching our webinar. I hope this has increased your knowledge on using the Drive Pro unit and what is accessible to you. And hopefully I'll see you soon. By all means, all everybody, please stay safe. Thank you very much indeed. Bye for now.